Hi, uh, Shaky Java back here for the second version of the how to actually use a wand mounted pressure gauge on an espresso machine. Uh, adding some tips and tricks from people at the Gaja Yahoo users group there. Thank you very much to Tex and others. And um, the first question that you might have is why build a pressure gauge for your coffee machine? And the easy answer for that is uh, all of the benchmarks that are used for brewing coffee are used with a reference of nine bars during pressure, uh, during uh, during brewing, and you know you may decide that you like the flavor some other ways, but just to sort of lock in a steady state of flow and grind and tamp and all the other variables that go into making a nice uh, cup of espresso, it's good to at least have a, a good starting basis point from which to vary your experimentation. And the second factor is that many machines ship with too high of a pressure uh, by manufacturers in order to ensure that the machines are actually going to crank out coffee uh, and that people won't worry that there is under pressure in their machines. And then one other reason is that uh, the ESE pods, the single use pods that people are putting into espresso machines actually, uh, I think, do better with a higher uh, pressure rating than the standard nine bar. So if people want to be the uh, ESE pod compliant, I think they may tend to ship things a little higher. Since we're in the world of pursuing the perfect shot, um, there goes Abby, my uh, second able assistant. My first able assistant is the uh, Gaja Classic here. So what I will do is, uh, this is the pressure gauge that I've used, that I built in a prior video. Uh, it's going to connect this hose to my steam wand, and I will show that briefly. But this this purpose, this uh, method should work for any uh, dual use single boiler machine, and. Um, I got a standard gauge. It doesn't really go up to as many bars as I would like. Uh, it goes up to 11, but I think that should be fine. And then the follow-on of all of this will be, I will then later show how to actually adjust the pressure gauge, the OPV, the overpressure valve inside the uh, Gaja as a how-to. So all you do here for you Gaja owners, if you don't have a Gaja, you don't have to put up with this tomfoolery, uh, is you pull off the turbo frothing wand uh, attachment you slide this in here into the tube. I've used quarter inch tube, which matches up very nicely with the uh, steam wand gauge there. You may have to force it if you have a nice little nozzle on the end of yours. And then I will tighten these up on camera and we will go through some of the other basics of uh, priming the pump, etc. And we're back. One thing I failed to mention earlier is that be sure to use a hose that's rated for a high pressure. Uh, the insides of your uh, espresso machine will get up to very, very high pressure and using standard fuel gauge line uh, that is sometimes rated for up to 150 PCI, PSI, um, will, uh, which is you know right around 10 and a half bar, or 10 bar, excuse me, uh, just is not a good, uh, a good practice. So get a high pressure air pressure gauge there. Another thing is, um, if you'll notice, I have a valve here and the reason for this valve is that without this, if you were just to go straight from the wand into the pressure gauge, uh, unless I had some very crafty way of filling this tube up with water, it would essentially have an air pocket in here. And then that would create some what's called false pressure and you get some weird readings. So what I've done is, and if you're familiar with priming your pump or priming your boiler uh, for use so that your first shot isn't always messed up, uh, we're gonna do something similar. So I've got the Gaja set up, the boiler is on, it's ready to brew. I'm going to wait until I have some flow coming out of here. And that's probably not the best setup. We'll figure something out. Um, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, what we've done now is found a nice little receptacle for the water that should come out of this uh, steam wand once I start the brewing process. And we should see a little bit of action on the gauge as well. Um, one thing to keep in note is this is a high pressure system and um, there will be some temperatures, the brass fittings will get warm, so I'll probably be touching parts that aren't actually uh, directly on the brass fittings. So let's make sure that this guy, this tube is full of water. We will open up the valve and you can see that I have a nice leaky steam pressure valve or something in there because it's got a bunch of water already in the system. I will crank it up. We should see some water coming out of the group head as well. And then once I see a stream over here, I'm going to reach in 
and close that up. Now I know I have pressure, water evenly distributed through the entire system, and I'm showing about two bars during the process. So now I will stop the brew and I will uh, go fill this guy up. One of the reasons we didn't see a lot of pressure there, you might be saying, well, why isn't this showing me nine bar of pressure? Well, part of it is that the uh, there's no resistance there to the flow, so it's not a very closed system. And that pump is sitting there. It should be actually going up to nine bars, but we'll see. And we're, we're seeing some of this pressure uh, go up now, as we can see the, uh, the needle spinning up here. I'm going to go um, uh, fill this with some coffee, and we should see what the, uh, this thing being the portafilter, and we should start to see some interesting activity then. All right? Okay, sports fans, we are back here with the uh, DIY pressure gauge testing. Uh, I have coffee in the portafilter. There's a nice puck in there, a little Stumptown uh, coffee beans. We're sitting right about four bar. I don't know if that's correct or not. Um, but let's start the brewing process and see what happens. So you press start. And now you see the temperature drop a little. It climbs way up, leaking a little, so my, my filter system should be down. And it is cranking it, and it's sitting there at 10 and a half, 11 bar. So I may need to adjust the OPV valve, um, I think is what that's telling me because it shouldn't be getting that high. Now it's wiggling a little bit because I have a dry gauge and not a nice liquid filled one. Um, we'll let this go for a little while. I may have overpacked. It's still working on the grind, but that shouldn't be impacting the pressure of the system too much if the system's internals are working right. So we'll stop that brew. You can hear the release. And now it's dropping down. So uh, the next video will be showing how to reset this gauge so that uh, or reset the overpressure valve so that uh, we can get to that nine bar of pressure and um, you can also see that the tube is swelling up just a little bit there um, but that would be expected if this thing is over pressure so it should be back in business when we are good to go thank you very much ah and one more thing i forgot so we're sitting down there the pressure is uh slowly going down i'm enjoying my joe here and uh, I will press the restart valve and you'll see that the pressure drops again as the solenoid opens up there. And so we should be back to the restart position. But that is all for now. Enjoy. And again, as always, uh, all comments, questions are most welcome.